Hello, Ironmen of Gillanor. I have compiled every method I can think of to help you train Herblore on your Ironmen. Before I get started, this video is long. So feel free to jump around using the timestamps on screen and in the description. Now first things first are the essential items. I'm not going to talk about every item on the screen here because most of them are pretty obvious what they do. Just keep in mind, only buy three pieces of the factory outfit. The modified botanist mask will always, always, always be worth more than five pieces of the factory outfit. So I recommend the factory top, the factory gloves, and the factory boots. Next is torsal incense sticks. You're going to want to use these when you're making any potion that's above 300,000 herbal XP per hour. Or anything above extremes. Having a dungeoneering level of at least level 95 is extremely helpful, because then you unlock the Garajo resource dungeon. Having 115 unlocks Edemu, which is a great slayer creature to kill for Herblore supplies. Next, we've got quests, dailies, and weeklies you can do to help you train Herblore. For quests, there's millions of Herblore XP you can get by doing all of the quests. So get Quest Cape and you'll skip the first 80 or so Herblore levels without even trying. These dailies and weeklies are pretty straightforward. I do have a Jack of Trades guide on my channel. Check that out also. The most important daily on here by far is Crystal Flasks. You will 100% run out before 120 if you don't do this daily. And even if you do it daily, you still might run out. So do it every single day. Now let's talk farming. It's really, really difficult to train Herblore without having a good farming level or doing herb runs. So on the bottom left of the screen, I'm going to be showing a full farm run that includes herbs, trees, fruit trees, mushrooms, and bushes. And on the right, I've got my farming preset. And now for the preset. I've got Trollheim Teleport Runes, one dose of Juju Farming Potion, not perfect Juju Farming Potion, a giant end pouch, an attuned Crystal Teleport Seed, uh, non-attuned works just as fine, you just need to recharge it, all of the seeds I'm going to plant, a combined Catalyst Fragment in case a herb patch died, a Taquazo for Fairy Rings, an Explorer's Ring, and a modified Botanist Mask. The Passage of the Abyss in my inventory is for when I forgot a patch and I need to teleport to a spirit tree. And equipped, I've got my farming outfit, my farming cape, the Tyronwyn Quiver for the mushroom patch, and Grace of the Elves and Brooch of the Gods for free stuff. Now, besides giving you lots of farming XP, your animals can also give you a lot of supplies to help you train Herblore. Ready for the speed round? Small pens. One pen of rabbits, one pen of chinchampas. Medium pens. One pen of spiders, one pen of zygomites. Large pens. Cows, until you have yaks. And then yaks, forever. Use your breeding pen for whatever you want, or whatever you need to catch up on. Ranch at a time, if you have the levels for it. It's actually more simple. Small pens, you're going to want frogs. Medium pens, you're going to want pteranosaurs. And for large pens, I recommend the highest level of one of each type. One pen of apoterosaurs, one pen of rexes, and one pen of... What are these called? Absolute units! Exactly. One pen of those. Now, you only have two large pens, so... One of those is going to have to go in the breeding pen, and I'd recommend whatever you need the most of. Now this farm run in particular took me 10 minutes to do, and I got 555 primal pulp. So not including boosts or the herbs I harvested, I just banked 80,500 herbal XP in 10 minutes. Do your farm runs. Next up, I'm going to break down every herb, how to get each one, and how to use each one. Times are on screen if you're looking for a specific herb. Starting with Guam, you can get these from Herb Patch 1s and Low Level Slayer, and I recommend making Herb Patch 1s 
until you have Garaho Dungeon unlocked, and attack potions. Next, Taraman. You can get these from Hard Patch 1s and Low Level Slayer, and I recommend Strength Potions and Serum 207s. Marantil, you can get these from Hard Patch 1s and Low Level Slayer, and I recommend making Guthix Rests. Harlander, I recommend Hard Patch 1s and Low Level Slayer to get these, and I recommend making Guthix Rests and Cooking Potions. For Renars, you can get these from Hard Patch 1s and Vyres, make Prayer Potions. Spirit Weed, you can get these from Her Patch 1s, and I recommend making Summoning Potions and Divination Potions. Toad Flags, you can get these from Her Patch 1s, Fires, and Telos. If you're a hardcore, be careful at Telos. Make Sarah Doman Brews with these. Irits, you can get from Big Game Hunter, Fires, and Edamu. And I recommend making Super Attacks with these. Avento, you can get these from Nex, Vyres, and Edamu. And I recommend making Hunter Potions and Extreme Attacks. Quarm, you can get from Big Game Hunter and Vyres. And I recommend making Super Strengths. Snapdragon, you can get from Vyres and the Rare Drop Table. I recommend making Super Restores and Invention Potions. For Cadenzine, Big Game Hunter, Vyres, and Edamu. Make Super Defense Potions and Sticky Bombs. Landedime from Hellweir, Vyres, and Edamu. Make Super Magics and Extreme Defense. Dorfweed from Nex, Vyres, and Edamu. Make Super Ranged, Extreme Strengths, and Vuln Bombs. Torstals from Nex, Vyres, and the Rare Drop Table. Make Overloads and Torstal Incense Sticks. Arbucks from Big Game Hunter, Dinosaur Tasks, and Vile Blooms. Make Aggro Overloads and Adrenaline Renewals. Felstocks from Dark Beasts, Shadow Creatures, and Lamp and Flora. Make Prey Renewals and Elder Overloads. So now that you've gathered your herbs, let's get to the hard part of herb lore, getting the secondaries. Now, I'm only going to talk about a couple of the secondaries that I used the most on my journey. There are lots of other secondary ingredients that are not included in this video. These are just the most commonly used and how to get them. Starting us off are Eye of Newts. You can buy these from the Taverly Herblor Shop and the Herblor Shop in Myler District. And while you're here, buy your vials of water, buy your power burst vials, buy your bomb vials, Buy some limpwords, buy some white berries, basically buy everything in the shop. And speaking of limpwort roots, you can get more from Slayer and from Byers. Next up, Snapegrass. You can get lots of these by killing Aberrant Spectres. The best way of getting crushed nests is by doing nothing and having your kingdom workers gather it for you. There are two really good methods of gathering a lot of white berries. One is Corporal Beast. You can AFK this with a proper setup, but if you're really desperate and don't want to AFK, you can head to this spot in Taronwyn with a yak, some alks, or some broad arrowheads, or something to disassemble, and you can gather 600 white berries an hour here. The same setup can also be used for Cave Nightshade, except you can't store it in your yak. You can still bring winter storage scrolls, and you can send them to your bank, but these two spots are a great way to alk all of the junk you have in your bank. Once you have the desert tasks done, at least the medium tasks, you don't have to worry about potato cactus anymore. And you can get lots of wines of Zamrax from either Krill, or Camping Fires, or the Twin Furies. There's lots of good methods for this. Now killing liverworts is a fantastic way of getting poison ivy berries. And for mud runes, do your wicked hood daily. The best way of getting papayas is by casting a fruit bat special attack. Really good thing about the special attack, you can actually use it while training herb lore. Or while gathering white berries. Or while gathering cave nightshade. Basically, if you're low on papayas, make fruit bats, turn those pouches into scrolls, and use them while training herb lore. So those are the most used secondary ingredients for herb lore and how to get them. Now there's two other types of potions you can make with through Herblore. 
The first is combination potions. And these are any potion that involves a crystal flask. What's great about these is during the Myler Voice of Saren in the district, you get plus 20% experience making those. 20%. And if you drink a perfect Juju Herblore or a perfect plus potion, it's plus 25%. Do not make combination potions anywhere else except Myler District on Voice of Saren. You're wasting 25% experience. The next type of potion are Power Bursts. And these are so good in terms of experience. So very good. However, they are not worth making until you have the plus two recipe. They are too expensive. Getting the plus one and the plus two recipes reduces the amount of materials you need to make the potion, but gives you the same amount of experience. These potions are really, really good. Again, don't make them until you have the plus two recipes. Once you have them, go nuts. All right, before we talk overall methods, I need to talk about my favorite place on Gelinor, the Mazcab Potion Shop. You can buy summoning potions and one of each super potion, all in four dose form, and they respawn, they restock every two minutes. So every hour, you can spend 1.4 million GP. I mean, it, it seems like a lot, you can spend 1.4 million GP to buy 30 four dose super potions, which if you turn these all into regular overloads before boosts is 88,000 turbo XP every hour. Definitely worth the cost. So anytime you're training Herblore and you have money to spend or any other bank standing skill, whether it's crafting, whether it's fletching, whether it's invention, whether you're alking things, go to the mass cab shop, spend all your money on these potions, and you will not regret it. And now we're ready to put everything together. But before I give you a total rundown of 1 to 120 and beyond, let's talk the best overall methods. Of course, far and away the best source of getting Herblore supplies and experience is buyers. Now there are a lot of other good ways of getting Herblore supplies and secondaries. Some of the best include Slayer, specifically Biobloom and Edemu tasks, doing bosses, especially necks, buying your potions from Mazcab, and of course, farm runs. Always do your farm runs. So now we're ready to put everything together and actually train the skill. But first, before I give you a rundown of 1 to 120 and beyond, there's a couple disclaimers. First, use quests and lamps to skip as many levels as possible. This is not the first time I've said this, this guide, but it is the last. Second, if you run out of a herb or a secondary, check your bank for other potions you can make before you go and farm more supplies. You might find you have 10,000 Avento in the bank. Third, you can boost your herbal level to make higher level potions. This doesn't work for the plus one and plus two recipes, but it works for nearly everything else. And putting forth a little bit of effort now to boost your Herblore level to make higher level potions is going to save you a lot of time in the long run. And finally, it's very difficult to make only one type of potion to train. Very, very difficult, at least on an Ironman. So the final part of this guide will be showing you the milestone levels to unlock new sorts of potions. Thankfully, most of these potions are really straightforward. At level 18, you unlock Guthix Rests. Level 38, you unlock Prayer Potions. At level 43, you unlock Divination Potions. At level 45, you can start making Super Attack Potions. And at this point, you can use all of your Eerits on these. At level 52 and 53, you can start using your Avento to make Super Energy and Super Hunter Potion. But don't use all your Avento now. You'll regret it. If you're not already, start doing Herb Patch 1 every single day. And use all of the Regala you get and any sheep wool you've had from player owned farms to make runecrafting potions. At 55, you can start making super strength potions, and you can use all of the quorum you ever get on these. Also at level 55, you can start making cooking potions, which require 
Cooked swordfish. A great way of getting these is by putting one or two workers from miscellanea on fish. At level 63, you unlock super restores. At level 64, you unlock juju farming potions, which aren't great for XP, but they are essential for herb runs. Also at level 64, you can upgrade your hunter potions to super hunter potions. At level 66, you unlock super defense potions. And if you're not planning on making any sticky bombs in the future, this is all you'll use your catentines on. At level 70, you can upgrade your divination potions. At level 72, you can make super ranged potions. Again, don't use all your dwarf wheat here. At level 75, you can upgrade your rune crafting potions. At level 77, you can start making invention potions, which are great if you're out of red spider eggs. At level 79, you can upgrade your cooking potions. At level 80, you can upgrade your super hunter potions. At level 81, you can start making cerebrews, and this is all you'll use your toad flex on. At level 82, you can start making weapon poison plus plus potions. At level 84, you can make adrenaline potions. At level 87, you unlock your first combination potion, which are replenishments. Also at level 87, you can start upgrading your invention potions. When you start unlocking the levels to make extreme potions, I highly recommend upgrading all of your supers to extremes. Most of the ingredients to make these extreme potions are easier to farm than the super potions. So at level 88, you unlock extreme attacks. At level 89, you unlock extreme strengths and extreme divination potions. At level 90, you unlock extreme defense potions, as well as primal extracts. I highly recommend making all of your primal fruit pulp into primal extract before level 112. At level 91, you unlock extreme magics. At level 92, you unlock extreme ranging potions. At level 94, you unlock prey renewals. After you get prey renewals, you're going to use all of your fell stocks on these until you make elder overloads. At level 95, you can upgrade your super invention potions. And at level 96, you can upgrade all of your extremes into regular overloads. It's 1,000 experience for one Torstal. At level 97, you unlock holy overloads which are an extremely cheap and extremely efficient use of your supplies. If you're planning on killing lava strike worms, you can upgrade these again into aggro holy overloads if you unlock the recipe from archeology. span At level 99, you can make supreme overloads, which are great for PVM. However, they are not an efficient use of your herbler supplies. So if you're only in it for the experience, don't make these. At level 99, you unlock perfect plus potions. You also have to unlock the recipe through Dungeoneering. At level 100, you unlock weapon poison plus 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 potions. At level 102, you unlock charming potions, and these are amazing. They're so easy to make as long as you have a charming imp. Get 99 summoning first, or you're going to run out of charms. At level 104, you can upgrade your super cooking potions to extreme cooking potions. At level 105, you can make sticky bombs now that you have the plus two recipe. Only recommend this if you have plenty of canontines and plenty of super defense potions. At level 106, you can start making elder overloads. Same as the supreme overloads. They're not worth it in terms of XP per supply, but they are great for PVM. At level 107, you unlock Vuln Bombs, and just like the Elder Overloads, these are great for PVM. However, these are also great XP. Just don't use all your Dinosaur Roars. If you don't mind mining and digging, you can make Power Burst of Opportunity now that you have the plus 2 recipe at level 107, and these are a really, really cheap way to train Herb Lore. At level 109, you unlock Power Burst of Vitalities. And man, have I made a lot of these. The good news, you can farm Ceridoman Brews and Rocktails really fast. The bad news, you can use all of your Cerebrews and Rocktails for Herbler XP. And they're not that great for PVM. So if you're really desperate for Herbler XP, this is a great option. But I wouldn't recommend making all of your Cerebrews and all of your Rocktails into Power Bursts here. Unless you really only care about the Herbler XP, then knock yourself out. At level 110, you unlock Spiritual Prayer Potions, 
These are a combination potion that are very, very easy to make. The XP is also great, but this is where you're going to run out of crystal flasks. At level 112, you can make Power Bursts of Masterstroke plus twos. Again, these are Power Bursts. They're great XP. Just don't use up all your Dinosaur Roars. At level 113, you can start making Power Bursts of Sorceries. So if you have any Super Runecrafting Potions left, stop upgrading them to Extremes and use them for these Power Bursts. At level 117, you can make Extreme Prayer Potions. If you've killed a lot of wyverns, or plan to kill a lot of wyverns, these are great. At level 119, you can start making adrenaline renewals, now that you have the plus 2 recipe. And now, you can use all your dinosaur roars, because this is the best source of XP for them. And if you continue to make all of these potions, you'll be 120 in no time. And, the cape is actually very useful. While you have the cape on, you make 25% more overloads, supreme overloads, and elder overloads. So while you're not getting any new recipes at 120, you are going to get 25% more overloads, which is going to help if you decide to go for 200 million XP. This skill definitely looks scary at first, especially when you're not able to buy things from other players. But in the end, it's not that bad. Now, I talked about a lot of things at this guide, but I'm not perfect, and I may have missed something. If I did, please let me know about it in the comments below, and if this video was at all helpful to you in any way, please leave it a like. And let me know if there's any other guides you'd like me to make, Iron Man or otherwise. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.